If you're like me, you really get tired of cleaning the upper left-hand corner of your laser engraver. You know, the part where you use it most of all. The imposition tool can help. What if we were to take a couple strips of wood or other material, four and a half inches wide, put a strip of that at the top and along the side, and then bump our product in that corner instead of at the rulers. We're going to use this example to illustrate how we can create an imposition layout that would offset away from the rulers and allow us to engrave one or however many we can get on the remainder of the table. And here in print preview we'll start off as we normally do go into the imposition layout and selecting our trusty one by one UL, our one by one upper left, which we generated in imposition layout 101. So that slams that in the upper left hand corner. Now we'll go, instead of basic settings, we'll go to edit margins. And our margins here, based on our measurements, are four and a half by four and a half. And let's enter that. At that point, do you see what it has done? It's put a four and a half inch margin on the left, on the top, and now we can engrave one or many more anywhere we want it. If we're going to save those four and a half inch strips and use them on a regular basis, this becomes a very helpful file for us, or let's create a file. Let's save, and let's call this one by one upper left, maybe with, with four and a half inch offset. So we have a brand new imposition layout. At any point, we can select this and engrave one part, ah, or many. Let's illustrate. We'll go back to Edit Basic Settings and tell it that on this 24 by 18 table, well, first I'm going to tell it to maintain document size so we'll be sure we don't go over our area. Then we'll tell it we want maybe five of those across and maybe six up and down. Let's tell it to show us what we have, and there we have it. So now we have a total of 30 pieces of three and a half by two wooden ornaments, let's call them, in this case raster only, but could also cut out from that point. How much time do we lose, or sometimes occasionally even a product, by eyeballing a rounded corner plaque or a piece of acrylic with a bevel that the bevel is taller than the rulers, maybe even a high-end piece of crystal we occasionally lose, well, the set of jigs we just finished won't help us with any of those. But how about let's take a thicker piece of wood, maybe one inch thick, one and a half inches wide, and build an imposition tool with those dimensions to handle that problem. Let's say we have a one inch piece of crystal that we're going to engrave on the back side, but it has a bevel on the front close to a half inch tall. This is our design. So as we begin to print it, we'll create an imposition layout that'll handle that bevel along with a, some spacers that we just mentioned, uh, approximately one inch tall also. So let's go to File, Print Preview. There's our part thrown out to the middle of our laser engraver, and we're going to go to the Imposition Tool. And while in the imposition tool, we'll select our one by one upper left, but we want to build some spacers in here. So instead of basic settings, we'll go to edit margins. We'll tell it we have one and a half inch on top, one and a half inch on the side. That 
bumps that out there and now we can handle that with our one and a half inch spacers for any of that type project where we have a bevel or a rounded edge plaque. Often when I start explaining this concept of using different imposition layouts with different spacers, then people say, well, oh, that's good, but I lose my numerics. I can't use the rulers for rulers. Well, let me introduce you to one of my favorite imposition layouts combined with spacers, and that's a regular old carpenter square that you buy at Lowe's or Walmart, or etc. This particular one is two inches wide by one and a half inch on the other dimension. Let's use this as one final imposition layout that we'll create and store and have available anytime we need it. I'm going to use this as a final example of creating imposition tools for different spacers for different purposes and products within our laser engraving systems. We're going to cover a few things that we have not covered before using the imposition tool. So I hope you'll follow this to the end. This is our project. We're going to use our carpenter rule to keep the acrylic away from our rulers so we don't have to spend as much time cleaning. We're going to use our carpenter rule spacer so we need to build an imposition layout that matches up to that. And this is our project. We have a sheet of 12 by 12 acrylic that we're going to cut as many Harley Davidson logos as possible out of that sheet. So let's go to File, Print Preview, and inside print preview, maybe the first thing I want to do is turn on my rulers. We haven't discussed that before, and I wish there was a way to turn those on by default, but if there is a way, I don't know. I'm going to rulers. Now I have my rulers out there. And very often, we'd want to be sure maybe that the upper left-hand corner, which is 0, 0 on our laser, um, matches right here. Now, in this case, we're going to change that in a moment. That's why we brought the rulers out there. We have a 12 by 12 sheet of acrylic, remember. But the first thing we're going to do is go to our standard 1 by 1 upper left, which slams that in the upper left-hand corner. But now, instead of basic settings, we're going to go to Edit Margins, and we need that particular carpenter ruler, two inches on the top, one and a half inch on the side. Other imposition layouts we've created have been the same, and I'm just illustrating here, they don't have to be. So when I press Enter there, that will bump that down. If indeed we're really going to use our carpenter rule, then that this becomes very helpful to us. Let's save that. By the way, we did not save our one inch wood, the last uh, projects. We want to be sure and save this. Call it whatever you want. That'll make sense to your recollection, but I'm going to call it one by one upper left in a carpenter ruler. So we have that permanently stored, and now we're going to continue on with this project. We're going to take our ruler now and bump that right to the corner of our first plate. Reminding you, we have a 12 by 12 sheet of acrylic. So now, let's go back to our basic settings and tell it and see how many we can get watching that ruler on top. Uh, let's grab a guideline and be sure we can get that many out of that. Sure enough, we can get four of those in there. Uh, so then up and down, we're going to see how many we can get there. Drag, drag a ruler out. Cannot get another one. So we see now that we can get 20 of these particular parts out of our laser engraver. And now at this point, maybe we should set that up. I'm going to go to Print Options. This is how we set our preferences, our properties. 
That's our options button. So now we can go in and we can tell it we want that to be both raster and vector. And we set some standard settings. I'm just making stuff up here, which would be pretty good for 18 by 24, 50 watt helix. Eh, probably that's even too much. Let's go 30% power. And then my vector to cut that completely out would be maybe uh, 15 and 100% power, maximum frequency. So leaving, of course, my table at 24 by 18, because that's what the imposition tool is handling. Let's OK that, and OK that. But now notice here, I'm not sending it direct to the printer. I'm just finishing the options. And at this point, if I'm set to go, then here is my print. That sends it direct to the printer. So now that is sitting at the printer, ready to be engraved. Project completed.